The abilities and looks of bionic limbs have been improving at a rapid pace these last few years. What used to just be controllable via detecting muscle movement, can now be controlled directly with your brain's thoughts and provide sensory information back into your brain. And due to these improvements, more and more people are starting to use them in their daily lives. In this video I'll be showing you the most advanced and futuristic bionic limbs ever created and explain how they work. This first video shows an MIT engineer who was born with a clubbed foot. It's a condition where the bones in your foot break super easily regardless of what you actually do. Later in life this resulted in him having to amputate his leg due to it not healing anymore and having the possibility of further infections. But since he's an engineer at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, he has access to very recent technology and got the surgery of amputation conducted in such a way that his neural pathways are still kept in his leg to enable a high bandwidth, read and write bionic leg to be controlled by him. In the meantime the Massachusetts Institute of Technology started creating the bionic leg for him to wear and wrote the software so he could move it in a natural way. After the surgery they started connecting the robotic limb with the lower part of his leg so that it could read the neural movements and send back signals of touch via electric currents. On the bottom of the bionic foot are markers that individually send back different currents to simulate how touching different parts of your real foot would feel like. This experiment is part of a larger research conducted by MIT to eventually enable any amputee to get improved bionic limbs to improve their quality of life. They believe that since it's 2019, we should already have robotic arms and legs and I can't say I disagree. Especially the sensory stimulation plays a huge part in what makes this so great and easy to learn because walking on a leg that gives you zero feedback is much harder than it might seem and this fixes that problem. One disadvantage this way of integrating bionic limbs has, is that it requires the actual amputation to be conducted in a way that keeps the bionic leg in mind. Amputations done without it, wouldn't work since they don't provide the necessary data to move the leg properly. But this could be fixed in the near future once direct brain-computer interfaces start interacting with bionic limbs. The sensory information BCIs could provide would also far exceed this implementation. You want to tickle the bottom of Papa's robot foot? Oh, on the bottom, all the way on the bottom. Sister. I'll push that one. Whoa, I feel that. Can you push other buttons? You're touching my pinky toe and my big toe. And it actually really tickles. <laughs> I hadn't thought some of this all the way through. <laughs> Just recently, back in 2020, Researchers found a way to detect really small neural electric currents inside an amputee's arm that used to go undetected due to their voltage being really tiny. Recording these tiny electric currents enable really precise finger movements on a robotic hand that almost seem completely normal. Unlike other similar bionic hands, it's especially easy to see how much better and usable they're by the speed at which they're moving the fingers. The users don't even need much time to get used to their new hand. One disadvantage this hand has towards the previous bionic limb, is that it doesn't provide sensory feedback back to the user. But this is likely just because it's not part of the research since there's no real physics barrier in the way of achieving that. That kind of control, you really have to go to the nerves. The problem with most of the technologies we have is that the signals are really tiny. You have tiny little peripheral nerve signals and you have noise in those signals that's about the same size. So when you try to hear what a peripheral nerve is saying, you actually can't hear it. We designed a way to connect up with the peripheral nerves with a piece of muscle. And then what happens is when a tiny little peripheral nerve signal comes down the nerve, it goes into the muscle and it becomes a huge muscle signal. We've now seen, to my knowledge, the largest voltage recorded from a nerve compared to all previous results. That makes these signals big enough um, that we can record them and interpret them for controlling a prosthetic hand. Arriving at APL in the summer of 2014 to take part in a study around modular prosthetic limbs, he had to undergo another surgery to make IM eligible to actually make use of his new arms. The interesting fact about this case is, that his whole arms have been amputated and not just the lower part or his hands. In fact, he has been the first shoulder-level amputee in the world to have the wireless APL prosthetic integrated into his body. First, APL started work on their prosthetics by working on their pattern recognition systems which work similar to machine learning. 
This pattern recognition system looks at electrical signals that come from the brain into the user's chest muscles to the appropriately move the user's arms. The training and practice was actually done in a virtual reality system where the amputee controlled a virtual arm instead of going right to a real robot arm. The arms have full three degrees of freedom which meant that he can move his robot elbow, hands and shoulders on both robot arms at once. This is a study done by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency of the United States, which is a major research facility focusing on groundbreaking technology. Previously and after 2014, they've done several other studies that read movements directly from the brain and correlate those signals to movements of a robot brain. But the range of motion shown in this muscle-controlled bionic limb has yet to be recreated. All of us on this RP2009 team, regardless of the type of patient we're fitting, are committed to making every effort to see that this ultimately reaches the end user in a way that they can actually utilize it. That's awesome. <laughs> it's not just the accomplishment, but the opening of frontiers and realizing that there's so much more to learn. This unique opportunity of interfacing with the end user, utilizing our technology, provides valuable feedback to the team. Feedback that will assist this DARPA developed technology in helping wounded warriors and others to regain the 27 degrees of freedom possessed by the human arm. The idea of the project to create a robotic bionic arm for amputees came from the co-founder of the project Dimitri Gazda in 2017, and in 2019 the first working prototype was created. Esper Bionics is a prosthesis with intuitive control technology. A team of 11 people in Ukraine is working on the bionic prosthesis, although the main market for Esper Bionics products is located overseas. We have agreements with two prosthetic clinics in the United States, where tests will start at the end of April, Anna Belovantseva said. In the fall of 2020, the project received investments from the Ukrainian venture fund SMRK, but the amount was not disclosed, as well as a grant from the Ukrainian Startup Fund. Esper Bionics is registered in the United States, and in May, its leaders hope to complete the registration of the prosthesis in the United States, after which the startup will start moving towards the European Union. The plans for 2021 in addition to active production and testing of prostheses is to attract new venture investments. We don't have minority investors. In the first stages Dima Gazda invested his funds from other businesses, and then we raised money from the Ukrainian Startup Fund and the SMRK Foundation. At the end of the summer we will attract again, there will be another round. It's about US funds, Belovantseva said. In the future, Esper Bionics will begin to develop other products, also related to prosthetics and orthopedics. But the ultimate goal of innovators is to implant sensors during their development and production. Such devices will warn about diseases, remove and analyze heart rate data and more. But to get to this point, we need to go through a lot of other developments, and the bionic prosthesis is our first stage, says Anna Belovantseva. Despite the fact that many startups eventually leave Ukraine, transfer production and development of innovation to other countries, Esper Bionics intend to leave the production of prostheses in Ukraine. Our team is working in the Ukraine, we plan that the team inside our offices and production will be in Ukraine, and the business part will move to the United States, because there will be major sales, says Belovantseva. In this next video, you'll be seeing a person that has had his left forearm amputated due to an aggressive cancer that was starting to spread up his arm. Due to his second chance at life, he's had a drive to get back to something resembling a normal life all while supporting research into robotic limbs. Johnny Matheny has become something of a guinea pig for experimental prosthetics. What he is testing here being at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory is a glimpse into the future of how humans and machines are going to interact. It's a mind-controlled arm that attaches directly to his skeleton and it's the results of a decade of work and $120 million of military funding. So this is the first time that they're attaching a prosthetic device to an implant that protrudes out of his skin and allows the prosthesis to actually be physically attached to his skeleton. Similar to the previous studies, he had to have an additional surgery to rearrange the nerves in his upper arm to allow for the prosthetic limb to be controlled. Johnny mentioned how hard it was to get used to this new way of controlling his arm but the search facility mentioned future work where signals will be sent back into his body so that he can feel things like texture, heat or softness. Of course, just like in the other studies, he eventually has no problems controlling them and can thus handle things like tennis balls nonchalantly.
In the future amputees will no longer have to get used to robotic arms. The robotic arms will get used to the human controlling it. Now for something completely different. The makers behind the video game, Deus Ex, made a goal of designing fashionable bionic limbs with the help of people in that field. Open Bionics says that they want to be the window to the future. They're trying to change the prosthetics industry by offering affordable functional and beautiful prosthetic devices to the people that need them the most. Open Bionics started a collaboration with the makers behind the Deus Ex video games. Deus Ex plays in a future where prosthetics are commonplace and used by everyone. Due to the futuristic and cool look of those video game robot limbs, players kept asking for them to make actual bionic limbs and that's what they set out to do. They partnered with the bionic limb company, Open Bionics, and instantly started making designs for them in the style of Deus Ex. The founder of Open Bionics said, I was 17 just tinkering in my bedroom at my parents' house when I was younger so when I went to university a few years later, I wanted to take the project a little bit further and found that bionic hands existed for amputees to wear but they were extremely expensive and so I used that as an excuse to be allowed to create a bionic hand for my final year project at university and then after university, I co-founded Open Bionics and we began working on the same problem with a more kind of definitive goal of being able to offer these bionic hands to people at a really affordable price. The eventual goal for them is to make bionic limbs where even healthy people would become jealous or where bionics become actually fashionable. This project will be open sourced as well, so people will be able to download them. If they have a 3D printer they'll be able to make themselves an Adam Jensen arm that will be functional and they'll be able to use it. They don't want this technology to only be accessible to people without both of their hands so they partnered with Intel's RealSense division and Razer's Stargazer division to enable multiple points on the hands motion to be captured in real time. The result is a one-to-one -one mirroring which they need to completely recreate the intended movements of the hands on the robotic hand many people think that this project can only be science fiction but that couldn't be further from the truth. Things we've seen in gaming and movies are slowly becoming a reality and this partnership between Open Bionics and Deus Ex is a large step towards that future. Are you also looking forward to a future where bionic limbs are commonplace? Please tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.